Hello everyone and welcome to the test of a new colonization series install. I had a previous colonization series that ran for quite a few episodes in 0.24 and 0.90 but right now that install is very difficult to run without it crashing so I was forced to abandon that series because it was just too difficult to make episodes in but fortunately Squad decided to release version 1.1 just in time. Version 1.1 gives us the possibility of running in 64-bit and much better for performance. So that allows me to add all the mods without any problems, hopefully. And uh, right now, of course, all the mods are just being updated. So I expect that things will be a little bit iffy and have glitches, but that's all right. Uh, this is episode 00A for a reason. It is a testing episode. And I expect that basically this is about as bad as things are going to get. Uh, well, until we overload the series with a lot of existing missions. But I expect a lot of glitches and stuff like that. But I've got a lot of mods in here already that we were using in the original series. I've got all the colonization mods, including I'm going to use USI Life Support in this one instead of TAC Life Support. TAC Life Support has not been updated for version 1.1 yet. I might reconsider which one to use. Uh, when I start episode 1, because I'm more used to TAC Life Support, but for now we'll go with this. And uh, so you can see uh, USI, and also I've got uh, Planetary Base Inc. in here. Now that is that probably needs a little bit more work, it's a very pre-release sort of condition. The USI colonization mods are all, uh, all pretty much ready because Rover Dude had access to KSV 1.1 ahead of time because he's working with Squad on the parts. But uh, yeah, Planetary Base Inc, some of the other mods, uh, there are two very important mods, well let's say three very important mods that were in the original series that have not been updated to my satisfaction yet. Uh, Infernal Robotics, uh, KAS, and KIS, so Kerbal Attachment System and Kerbal Inventory System. Uh, procedural Parts seems to be working just fine, uh, we'll try it out, but it might be iffy, it's sort of a pre-release sort of condition. A lot of the mods that I've added are actually visual mods. And so, well, we do have uh, procedural fairings as well. So we'll see if that works out. I do like the egg egg uh, shape fairing in as opposed to the stock fairings, even though the stock fairings are marginally better now. So we'll see if they separate properly. That's very important. I do not have very good landing struts. So taking a look at our rocket here, we've got procedural tanks involved. We've got a lot of familiar parts, but a lot of procedural tanks. That's a procedural tank right there. Lots of textures for the procedural tanks. We've got procedural fairings here. We've got uh, LVT-45s here, so that's normal. And this is in our procedural fairing inner stage. And I've got the controllers here and here. Parachutes. I've got real chutes. Ooh, that's clipping a little bit. Maybe I'll give a little bit more space to that. Uh, I, I, for some reason, real chutes doesn't have the real chute parts, uh, but it does have real chute on the on the stock parachutes, so that's fine. I'm not too sure what benefit real chutes has now that stock parachutes deploy at a proper time and in a proper way. We'll find out. So that's up there. And then another procedural tank. And then I haven't got any good landing struts, and tweak scale hasn't been updated yet. So I wasn't able to use these landing struts and scale them up, which would have been ideal. Uh, instead, I've decided to go with the landing gear. I don't know if that's going to work or not. We're going to find out. This is something we're going to test if we get a chance. I've got far in. Deadly reentry doesn't seem necessary uh, since we have stock heating now. So far is there, KOS. Uh, what is this? This is the USI Life Support. Uh, this is the KSPPD, right? Okay, so I think that just about does the part mods that I have in here. Oh, and of course, extra planetary launch pads, right? I do expect to put more mods in, but let's check how stable this stuff is before I add anything else, like near future, maybe, or stuff like that, maybe even interstellar, if you want to get really grand about it. Um, yeah, all right, let's launch this test rocket. Okay, well, I can tell you it took quite a long time to bring the rocket out to the launch pad. And the chatterer effects I need to turn down, it sounds like. Way too much atmosphere there. 
mainly the wind. Okay. Yeah, let's just leave it like that. Uh, beeps don't need to be so loud. So chatter is in here. You can see we've got Blizzy's toolbar. We've got um, what's that? Uh, docking alignment. We've got the distant object enhancement. We've got texture replacer and window shine and uh, Teflon mic skybox. We've got environmental visual enhancement. Actually, we've got stock visual enhancements. So scatterer and all that stuff is in planet shine. So a whole host of great visual mods. So things should look very good. And for reference, now that you've got the, basically the full list of mods, uh, we are running at 4.77 gigabytes of RAM. Obviously impossible in the stock game without uh, OpenGL or something like that. And uh, my CPU is running at 22%. In the VAB, it was uh, running close to 50%, which is nice to see. We do want to make sure that it's using as much resources as possible and things seem all right. It took a long time to load the craft onto the launch pad, which was interesting. It took about a minute. So that's uh, might be worrisome, but we'll see. Uh, I'm going to bring out MechJeb to make sure that we've got smart ASS functionality here and see if that's stable or not. Surface as usual. Okay, and so with that, ignition. So there's a two stage here, but the first stage we're going to land on the eastern peninsula. We're not going to try and boost back, but we'll try and we'll try and land it out here, over here. Is the plan? Everything looking good. Skybox looks good. I think I'm also using Tomasino's Sun Flare in this. I've put it in most of my installs, but I forget if I added it into this one. Um. I should have real plumes here, don't I? Don't I have real plumes? Hold on, let me quickly check. Yeah, I have real plumes. But I guess they're not configured for these engines? Oh, I really need to tilt a little bit faster here. Now, FAR is installed. So I have to be careful. I mean, of course, you have to be careful in stock, too, with the flipping and all. Frame rate seems to be okay. There are a lot of mods involved, so I mean, I, I, there aren't very many parts, so I would expect good performance. It's not too bad. Let me throw it down a bit. Let's take a look at the map. I want to hit the eastern continent. Um, the I really would like the bold part of the trajectory to be much more prominent than the part behind us, just so that I can see where we're ending up so I might want to reverse that okay uh, that seems to get us beyond that point let's see we have a little bit of fuel left that's fine let's see if we have enough fuel to get our payload to orbit though Ooh, that was loud I'm gonna have to adjust the volumes here okay I, I might want separation rockets just so I don't blast that thing too much okay let's get rid of the fairings okay fairings separate very nicely I need my MechJeb displays. I haven't configured those. I'll bring those in later. I mean, I guess I could quickly bring up uh, Orbit Info. Would be helpful. We do want to get this to orbit before the other part comes down. That's the trick here. We don't have FMRS or stage recovery or anything like that. I'm just trying to get this to orbit and then we'll hop back to the first stage to retrieve it. This is an expendable stage, though it's meant to deorbit itself. The payload is 32 tons. Okay, I'm pretty satisfied that we can get to orbit, right? Delta V wise, we've got 200. Well, that's pretty close. Let's let's make absolutely sure. Oh, are we? Okay, that's that should be locked anyway. Okay, uh, yeah, let's let's point down a little bit. No, I'll take control. Oh, that's orbit. Now, uh, let me... 
Let me use uh, unlock this fuel, transfer it down, and then we'll deorbit this because we don't need this hanging out right now. Uh, wait, Alt. Oh, there we go. Okay, so that will come back down. That is already on its way down, the first stage. So we're switching to another object. Make sure we've got good stability during this, because I plan for this to be a very common mode of recovering the first stage. The whole idea of getting it all the way to orbit, that takes a lot of time, because it's a long re-entry phase. This produces much less of a re-entry time and so it's quicker to retrieve rockets this way though maybe or maybe not safer we'll see UI is much smoother it's easier to drag stuff in the staging here we're gonna experience heat I couldn't uh, put one of the expandable heat shields down there because uh, there was enough space so we're gonna see about the overheating on the engines uh... Oh, okay, we were losing them. Alright, we've lost the engines. Hmm, so this is a little bit too harsh on the engines, it looks like. Let's see about the rest of the stuff. Looks like the engines were the only thing too delicate. So we'll have to come up with some sort of... Maybe I'll have to find a way to sneak the heat shield. Maybe make the bottom a little bit fatter would help. Far did not blink, uh, which is interesting. Far did not blink. Totally was fine with everything throughout this flight. Okay, drogue shoots, drogue shoots. We are above land. I will go to surface info now. Okay, main shoots. Got to turn down the sound a bit on some of these effects, I think. The engine effects weren't too bad. Drogue chutes are fully deployed. Gear down. Oh, uh, it doesn't start deployed. That's that's good. All right, main chutes are fully deployed. We're at 10 meters per second. We've got some fuel left, but we don't have engines. Uh, brakes are on, but uh, it's going to be a bit of a harsh landing without the engine power. So after this, maybe we should try and launch one of the colonization payloads, maybe an orbital station sort of payload, uh, something to the tune of about 32 tons, and uh, just deploy it and put some kerbals in, see if they do what they're supposed to do inside of one of those. Maybe some refinement on this will be good, though. Let's see. Ooh, it's not too bad, but that's obviously a problem. Just a bit of a hop. You know, maybe if the suspension wasn't locked, it would have turned out better. All right, uh, let me just revert flight. No, I can't revert flight. All right, uh, fine, space center. Maybe I should go to a tracking station and clean up the debris. But this isn't the main save. So, uh, as I was saying, uh, I'm going to be trying to do a career mode, but with all the science unlocked for the main series. So, I'll just unlock all the science ahead of time, but and I'll have some sort of starting budget, about 4 million or something like that, which is, I think, where we ended up in the previous series. And so we'll have those starting funds, but we'll have to pick up contracts to build up more funds and all of that as well. I want to be constrained in some way, otherwise I'm going to be making ridiculous things. And there's no benefit to recovering stages. I mean, it's nice to always, obviously, but uh, it's also great to have a very definite benefit to it. Okay, so how about some of the... Well, let's just go into the colonization tab here. And Kerbitat. Uh, well, uh, there used to be a colony control center. What do we have now? Pioneer module. Pioneer module, I think, has the main life support stuff, right? Right click. Oops. 
Habitation Kerbal Months 2. I don't know about this habitation thing. I'll have to learn about that. Designed to be the first module in place for a budding colony, the Pioneer module is a combination command center and colony grade life support recycler. So there you go. Alright, so that sounds good. Okay, well, I found the first obviously dubious thing. The pack rat mini wheel uh, seems to have no texture. Yeah, so that's an issue. Uh, there's some minor issues with procedural parts, uh, with the parts seeming to be separated, but actually I've had that in previous versions as well, so that's nothing new. Uh, they, they develop a gap for some reason. I'm just trying to find a good solar panel here. I'm taking a look at this life support status. It looks like with a max crew, I'd, I'd only send three Kerbals to this anyway. So saying three Kerbals, it looks like 150 days. Um, and uh, plenty of time under habitation uh, looks uh, I guess that's how long they can stand to be in there I don't know what the habitation time really means seems to have a base time the max crew so I guess the larger the crew capacity the longer they can stay in there because you know this place to move about extra time multiplier divide by crew so it's like this base times the max crew plus extra time times this multiplier I don't know what goes into the extra time or multiplier uh, possibly it says that in some of the descriptions of these parts and then divide by the actual crew don't know uh, what it says months there times months okay uh, anyway but I guess this is the number I'm supposed to be looking at uh, the one thing we seem to be short on is batteries. I've got batteries. What we really need is solar panels, I think. Oh, there they are. I could use the search function, I know. Don't have to mention that to me. I've uh, cleverly put the caribou cargo crates and slapped them on the side with the supplies. thought that would be a better way of doing it than adding another big module in line. Uh, this isn't the best place for the solar panels because we've got a docking port right there So they'll have to retract before anything docks there unless it's really thin But we'll go with that for now. It does not seem to take the bat uh, the solar panels into consideration with the batteries Which is interesting Okay That'll be our payload. That's 19.6 uh, tons well within the capacity of the launcher We'll see about the wiggle. I do have Kerbal Joint Reinforcement. I had that in the other series and it has been updated. So that'll be fine. Let Hopefully. And so here we have our test rocket. And we will launch this uh, with Kerbals. Why not? Okay, so here's the problem of procedural parts. Or maybe procedural... I think it's procedural fairings. It has this extra gap that it likes to put into things. So I'm going to, I just have to close that gap. I think it's procedural fairings that's doing it because between the procedural parts, it's not doing it. See, I mean, we've got two consecutive procedural tanks, this one and this one, and there's no gap there. So it's procedural fairings that creates that gap. I'm not going to put any additional struts. We are doing a, a test of the Kerbal Joint Reinforcement System. This is only a test. And we'll also test really big procedural fairings while we're at it. See if those separate nicely or not. Okay, so uh, that off the ground a bit. Plenty of Delta V available. The, the, I put the little uh, puff engines on the station so we can use some monopropellant. That's some monopropellant to use. So we'll call this uh, test station. Okay, and like I said, let's test out what happens if we put some Kerbals in. That'll be fine. Let's just put, uh, let's uh, swap out Jeb, put Valentina, and put Bill and Bob. Okay. That'll be fine. Now I'll make sure staging is correct. And then we'll be ready to go. Alright, that's good enough. Let me time how long it takes to bring it out to the launch pad for reference. We're still running at 4.7 gigabytes of RAM, by the way. Uh, 4.8, let's call it. Very modest CPU usage. I expect that the CPU be used more when there are many vehicles in the same scene. Not right now. Okay, I hear chatter. 
and it looks like loading took uh, precisely a minute. Uh, it took a minute to load this craft onto Launchpad. That's not great for live streams. Uh, for recording, that's not a problem as long as the game doesn't crash, right? Uh, so SAS is on, Thrall is up, Mechjeb. Ooh, that was slower than usual. Very calm, Mechjeb. Hmm. That could be sped up a bit, considering the rest of the UI is very quick these days. Okay, make sure portraits are visible. All right. Oh, and I've got uh, Kerbal stats or whatever it's called here, so that we can see what uh, what job they have and everything. All right. Uh, so everything looks good. Let's launch. Oh, I meant to put more up parachutes on that stage. Um, we'll just abandon the first stage. Make sure that the the station gets to orbit. Uh, yeah, I don't think the first stage is going to be recoverable. You know what? Uh, let me revert now. Let me revert and put so, some more parachutes and see if we can recover that first stage. And see if the wheel, the landing gear being like that works out for us. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, we, we had some, we've had some issues here. Look at the, the solar panels clipping into the procedural fairings. But also, uh, it looks like reverting caused a mild spike in my memory usage. Uh, we went from 4.8 to 5.1 on that. And of course, uh, previously, hmm, they're not, it's not taking into consideration the, the solar panels, so I'm going to extend those. Let me turn off auto shape, increase the max size, oh, or is it just displaying the soul panels for some unknown reason. It looks like the soul panels are actually in there. They're just being displayed for some reason. All right, we'll keep it to there. Uh, yeah, so a lot of times when you revert to the game crashes, uh, this time it didn't, but it did cause a 300 megabyte spike in RAM usage, so that's worth noting. Okay, now I wanted to put more parachutes on here so that its touchdown speed will be less than 10 meters per second. Uh, we also... Uh, need to figure out a way to slow down with these engines, but maybe with the lighter payload I can just manually burn to reduce our approach speed. So I'll make that my plan. Okay, so here we go. Uh, staging always seems to be wrong in the exact same way. I don't know. It's weird. Okay. All right, here we go. I think it's a fine looking rocket by any account. Obviously I had to do some, uh, some little bits with the wing pieces in order to smooth out the lines to the landing gear. But I don't regret that. It gives it a nice distinctive look. There's a little bit more lag here. Uh, maybe I can time that. Yeah, I mean physics lag. 50 seconds, okay. Uh, something has happened. I don't know, it's sort of floating up. That's weird. Uh, it looks like 2 to 1. Two real time seconds to one physics second. I don't know, did something. No. I don't know. There was some weird camera effect for a sec there. I don't know what was going on. Like that, right there. See how it's sort of floating up? Camera angles changing. That's an interesting effect. I think I'll call that a glitch. Performance-wise, it's not great. I mean, it's certainly better than, bef uh, than previous versions. How many parts do we have? Oh, I can't see what, what info. 123 parts, with a lot of mods being involved. Ooh. See, uh, the camera focus. So we seem to have some camera focus 
interesting issues. I do have Hullcam VDS installed, but I don't have any Hullcam VDS parts here. But maybe I'll try taking that out to see if that changes anything. But we didn't have this on the first launch, did we? No, we did not. This is very interesting. trouble even uh, getting the camera in the right place. Let me go back to map view, back here. Uh, yeah, interesting. The camera ends up throwing the rocket off to the side somewhere. When we go to map view, the map view doesn't refocus it on the center of mass. Curious. That is a glitch I did not expect. Okay. Well, that's why we're doing this test. So I want to go a little bit further out so that we can also do a little bit of a retro burn. Okay, that might be good enough right there. All right. <laughs> the rocket is now elsewhere. I mean, it's not a bad cinematic angle, but it's not really helpful for me to control the rocket like that. All right, separation. <laughs> totally the wrong part. Uh, okay, uh, this is the right. But no, this is that. This is actually the first stage. This is the right. Okay, so this is the second stage. And so I mean, I would conclude that it's something about the new rocket that wasn't true about the old rocket. So the colonization parts? That's interesting. I wouldn't have expected that colonization parts would have caused any problems, but that's what's new here. Right? There's no there's no other new mod here. Let let me open the fairings now. Okay. Try and get a look at things. Well, look at that. Yeah, something about the camera on the on these mod. Ooh, because the the control module is the Pioneer module right now. Something about the camera on it. Why is the are the caribou crates? Maybe maybe oh because of supplies here. Yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah, I don't know. Something about these parts is causing my camera... I mean, it might just be... It might not be this, and it might be just that uh, something has clicked in that wasn't clicking in before. It might be a different mod that's causing this. Or it could be the game. Heck, there are bugs all over the place. No blame or anything, just uh, observation. We really need to do this quickly so that we can get to the first stage again. This is ha, this is a little bit hard to deal with though. So we'll jump back to the first stage and if the camera seems to be alright on the first stage I think we can conclude that uh, it was actually a mod on this stage and therefore the K uh, USI colonization mods that are doing this funny little camera trick here. And still in orbital camera. Okay, that's definitely orbit. Uh, we can extend the solar panels. The window shine is also operant here because window shine is on the solar panels and all, but it would be quite a stretch to believe that that's what's causing the camera issue. And window shine is definitely doing its thing on the solar panels, that's nice. Alright, back to the first stage. Or this fairing piece. Um, Okay, first stage. All right, so retrograde, RCS on. Now I have to caution that by the time I actually get this video edited, uh, the mods involved in this episode might 
actually have changed quite a lot and fixed any possible problems. This is entirely possible, so important caveat there. Things are changing rapidly. Anyway, it looks good so far. I have to say that uh, being this close to the to the public release of this version of KSP, to have so many mods working this well is a pleasant surprise. We are at five gigs of memory, and it, KSP is currently using seventy percent of my CPU, presumably because it's rendering the fairing pieces. Right, the fairing pieces are still in the scene, they're within the physics range. So I'm retro burning here not only to pull my orbit in, but also to slow down so that we don't experience so much heat. Hopefully. We'll see, there's still some possibility of running the engines. I think there's gotta be safer, yeah. Of course, there's way below the payload capacity of, that this launcher was supposed to take care of 32 tons. This was only carrying 20 tons to orbit. Now, that's some rough terrain there. I really don't want to see a bad slope, but we might hit one. Okay, drogue shoots. Drogue shoots. Yeah, it looks like we're, we're like aimed for this ridge here, even. Maybe maybe we'll hit that depression there. Main shoots. We've got twice as many shoots, and that brings us to eight meters per second. Hmm. Not what I've hoped for. Oh, there's still a. I think there was still some fairing piece that was within render range there. Yeah, the camera is fine here. Quickly go to map mode and back. Yeah. Gonna have a little modicum of thrust to slow us down to 3 meters per second, let's say. Looks like it's flatter than it might have been if we were just a little bit to the west or east. Oh, it's still tipping over. I... oh, it's actually more of a slope than I thought. Okay, maybe... Yeah, I think that's probably too much of a slope. Yeah, we got to hit a safe landing location, otherwise it's not going to work out. It was better this time, but maybe we just need bigger landing struts, don't we? I think we just need better landing struts. Alright, so back to Space Center. So that's currently the state of things for the new colonization series. I'm going to wait until Infernal Robotics, Kerbal Attachment System, and Kerbal Inventory System all get updated. And then I think, uh, and of course, uh, hopefully some bu bugs get fixed. And then it's looking good so far. I've run this install for a fair amount of time, the two launches, and it hasn't crashed. So, and obviously performance was better. And uh, we are using much more than the 32-bit limit on the RAM. And I've got plenty of RAM to spare, too. So that is the state of things. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did enjoy this episode, please do press like. If you have any questions or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.